Okay, sorry for the interruption. I had to uh, leave for a second. Um, it was my alarm on my phone to remind me or to give me a nudge to get ready to go and get my daughter from school. Um, but she's at home today. <laughs> so I, I got disturbed for nothing, but never mind. Okay, so where were we? So this is um, a continuation of chapter three of S Angels, sci-fi fantasy fiction. Here we go. Um, right, okay. <clears throat> I'll start the, the paragraph again. Next to the dish was something that looked like the finger of a latex glove. When I looked closer, I saw it had tiny bristles all around the end. I took the weird glove thing and slipped it over my finger. It didn't feel like, like latex at all. And I just did what my instinct was telling me. I put my covered finger under the water for a second and then dipped it into the pressed powder. Here goes nothing, I thought. To my, sorry, I thought to myself as I began to brush my teeth. I'm all off my stride now, sorry. <laughs> the powder began to foam in my mouth instantly as I brushed and it felt marvellous. The powder appeared to be toothpaste and mouthwash all in one. I could feel the foam getting everywhere inside my mouth and when I'd finished, my teeth felt amazingly clean. After I placed everything back on the tray, I looked around for a hairbrush or comb, subconsciously running a hound down my long hair. I instantly realised that I didn't actually need one. My hair was so soft and tangle-free already. Damn, that water's amazing, I thought, smiling to myself. I made my way to the circular bed and lay down on top of the sheets, my mind actively going over everything I'd seen and done so far. My eyes felt so heavy, and it wasn't long before sleep took me. My dreams were like memory flashbacks with images of floating, rotten, whale carcasses in the sea and a grass lawn scattered with dead birds and butterflies as if they had dropped from the sky. Then faces started appearing of a man and some children. The man was handsome and rugged. The children were angelic with pale blue and green eyes. As their faces appeared, my heart ached. It throbbed so hard in my chest that I woke up with a start. Sitting up on the bed, my mind reeled from the vivid dreams. Were my memories trying to reach the surface? Who were the man and the children to me? My heart ached again in my chest and I felt like I should know them. I felt instinctively protective towards them as if they were family, like they were mine. While I attempted to collect myself and get control of my emotions and thoughts, Zanika appeared at the entrance to my room. Seeing her standing under the archway, I was again reminded of how beautiful she was. However, she wasn't alone this time. The male angel who'd helped her deliver my tiger cub was standing next to her with the same expression of love and compassion. He really was just as stunning as Zanika. They began to approach me and as they glided in my direction, the male angel touched a hand to his throat. The white glow shone at his throat, just like it did for Zanika, and I understood immediately that he wanted to talk with me too. Sliding myself to the edge of the bed, I stood to greet them. Zanika was starting to feel like a friend already, and I wanted to show them my respect and my admiration. The male angel was the first to speak, and although his voice was soft and musical like Zanika's, it had a definite, muscular tone to it. Welcome, young one. I am Harrick. You look well rested. May we talk with you? He asked. Sure, I replied. I was desperate for more information, and it looked like it was my chance. Zanika raised her arm and pointed to the seating area. There were four soft-looking chairs arranged in a semicircle around a small, low table. Let us sit and talk while we await our meal, she said. Harrick led the way to the chairs, gliding gently in front of Zanika and myself. 
He really was very masculine once my eyes and brain accepted what I was seeing. We all sat down in the soft chairs. Zanika and Harrick looked very relaxed and composed as they looked and smiled at me. I felt like I should say something before it began to feel awkward. Thank you for taking care of me and making sure I wasn't in any pain, I told them both with total sincerity and gratitude. Harrick smiled kindly while Zanika reached out to touch my hand. You are welcome, young one. We do not want to hurt anyone, she said softly. Do you have many questions to ask us? Harrick inquired. Yes, I do, I replied. My voice sounded stronger now, no longer the strained whisper it was before. Firstly, where did you get me from? I asked them both. I had so many questions, but I knew I'd have to be patient. Our searchers found you, but I do not know the exact location. We were trying to find as many survivors as possible, and you were the first human we found, she said. If there were any other humans with you, then the women would have been taken to a structure like this, she explained, raising her arms for emphasis. If there were any children or male survivors, they would have been taken to one of our healing crafts, she said. Harrick seemed to sense the despair emanating from my whole body. He gently touched my arm and calmness flowed through me from my head to my toes. I am sorry we cannot give you more information, young one, he said with so much feeling that I really felt bad for him. There were so many humans dead already. We had to act fast to save as many of you as we could. We also had to try and save as many of your Earth's animals as possible too. So we could not take time to record every detail as it would have slowed us down greatly, Harrick explained. What they were both telling me made perfect sense. I thought to myself that if I'd have been in their shoes, so to speak, I would have acted the same way. Why do you call me young one? I asked. They both smiled at me with affection. Harrick's hand was still touching mine and I think he left it there as a comforting gesture. He squeezed it gently as he explained. We are what you humans call ancient, he explained. We have lived as a race for more of your earth years than we can remember. To us, anyone who is not of our race is young, he added. I must have had a funny look, funny look of amusement on my face because as they continued, they both had what looked like humour dancing in their blue sapphire eyes. We also cannot die, Zanika said. Our bodies start to heal instantly if we are injured. We are healers of worlds, young one. We have saved many planets since we, be, since we came to be, she explained. I was in awe of them, these angels who spent their lives saving planets, races and their wildlife. It suddenly dawned on me why they were so loved, adored and worshipped by, by so many of us humans. Why have you visited our planets so many times and spoken to our people here? I asked, while images of angel pictures suddenly popped into my head. I began mentally ticking off the questions they were answering. Zanika and Harrick then explained to me that Earth had had a number of mass extinction events. The Cretaceous, sorry, Cretaceous era was the most recent event before now and there had been four mass extinctions before that. They hadn't been able to save the dinosaurs because the event had happened so fast. They were, however, able to save some sea creatures, insects and other creatures, enabling Earth to heal and recover. They'd kept returning to monitor our planet and once humans evolved, they knew they would have to be vigilant because of our natural desire to learn, develop and spread ourselves across the land which they understood could impact our earth and everything on it. They had appeared to some by, by 
sorry, they had appeared to some of us by accident, but when that had happened, they'd spoken with the humans, so they weren't scared. However, most of their encounters were intentional. They explained that they had built relationships with many of our ancient ancestors, such as the Mayans and the Egyptians. Civilizations who were willing to live in harmony with each other and more importantly, nature. The angels had shared their knowledge of natural healing, farming and showed them how to read the stars. I totally understood why they were worshipped by so many as they were pure souls only wanting to do good. Would you like a name, young one? Harry asked. I was very pleased, he'd asked, as I wasn't too keen on being called young one all the time. Yes, please, I'd like that, I replied. Zanika and Harrick looked into each other's eyes as if they were communicating with each other with their minds. There were no head or body movements at all, but as I watched them stare at each other, the blue in their eyes started to sparkle with silver, and then the silver sparkle began to spiral making their eyes look like sapphire blue whirlpools. After a few moments, they broke their eye contact and both turned to face me again. We think Alita would be a good name for you until your memories return. It means chosen one in one of your Earth's languages, Zanika stated. Thank you, I said. I meant it. It seemed like a beautiful name, and as I said it in my head, it sounded perfect to me. Just then, another angel entered the room with a large black stone tray, hovering between her hands. She was just as beautiful as Zanika and Harrick, with the same silvery blue shimmering hair and wings. This is Hula's, Harrick stated. He looked up at Hula's with such adoration that I wondered if they were together. Hula smiled lovingly at Harrick too and placed the tray on a small table in front of us. She turned her gaze to me and touched her throat, making it glow. It is a pleasure to meet you, young one, she said kindly. The young one's new name is Alita, Harrick told her. Hula's turned to look at me. It is a good name for you, she said. Her eyes sparkled as she smiled warmly. We all thanked Hula's for the tray of food and she bid us farewell and dipping her head in respect, she gracefully left the room. The stone tray was laden with exotic fruits, vegetables and white cups, with cups which looked as if they were made of shell. Inside was a delicious smelling fruit juice. My mouth watered just at the sight. I wondered if the angels were vegetarians or whether they weren't eating meat due to our, un our animals dying. Maybe I would find out later. We ate our meal, which included carrots, mango, various salad leaves, and many other foods I di didn't recognise, but still tried. I asked lots of questions, and just as I was asking one question, another would pop into my head. Zanika and Harrick were so patient with me, and they answered every single one. They explained that they had never been told to save planets, but they all knew it was their purpose in the universe. They had many gifts emanating from an inner power within their bodies. It was how they were able to move things with their minds and how they could understand and speak any language at will. They could also use that power to calm someone or remove their pain. I was fascinated by these amazing angels. I could feel my admiration and respect growing with every word they said. As we finished our drinks, I couldn't help asking them some more questions. What's your plan? And what are those rig looking structures I saw out of the window? I asked. Come, they said together as they stood from their chairs. We will show you what we are doing right now and what our plan is for your earth, Zanika said excitedly. She was obviously pleased to be able to show me. They began to move towards the archway entrance, so I got up to follow them. The floor felt warm on the bottom of my, of my feet as I walked after them. The thought of them not giving me shoes tickled me. Why would they think of shoes? 
They don't even wear clothes. We entered the corridor, turned right and walked for about five minutes. While I walked, Zanika and Harrick glided gracefully. We passed numerous decorative archways which I assumed were other rooms, maybe like mine. Each archway had different symbols on them, all were beautifully ornate and glowing against the frames of the arches. I wished I could read what the symbols said. Two other angels passed us as we travelled to, where, to wherever we were going. They were just like my two chaperones, apart from their hair. Their hair was just as long as Harrick's, Zanika's and Hula's, but these angels had green shimmering, uh, had a green shimmer to their long hair. They were both males, I guessed, as their forms were thick as set like Harrick's. As they passed, they dipped their heads slightly to the three of us. I wondered what their jobs were. Were they medical, like Zanika and Harrick, or did they work on the rig structures? I guessed I would eventually find out. There we go. So that was chapter three. Um, I, again, I apologies for it being in two, two parts. Um, I, I completely forgot to turn that alarm off. But um, being a mum, I'm always on the go, doing this, that, laundry, you name it, writing, whatever. Um, and I, I'm so busy all the time that if I don't set the, my alarm to remind me, next thing you know, it's like 10 minutes to and I've got a rush, so I don't like rushing. Um, anyway, so I really, really hope you've enjoyed um, chapters one, two and three. Um, it, it does get very, very interesting. I mean, this is just the beginning. Um, in my head, it's so magical. And the nice thing is, is that the people that have read it already, um, uh, many of them have said that it's very similar to Avatar, but more magical, um, and that it plays like a movie. And, and they can see it as a movie like Avatar, which is a good sign. So um, so I would love any feedback. Um, if you enjoyed, as I said, the three chapters, please buy your copy. Um, keep sharing, keep telling all your friends and family about the book. Um, it's Mother's Day coming up here. So if you live in the US um, or your mum is American, then uh, make sure you get your copy quick. Um, obviously, because it take, these are paid, uh, these are printed on demand. So... Um, so when you get these from Amazon, you have to allow for them to be printed and then sent to you. So please give yourself plenty of time if you want to get yourself an adult co um, a paperback copy. Um, and just to remind you, there is an adult version, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that has the naughty bits and the adult language. And then there's a young adult version that is teen safe. It has no adult language, um, no mature scenes um and like i've told some of you already the reason i did that was because i've got four children although the older three are in their 20s now but i wanted them to be able to read my book and still be able to look me in the eye you know without getting embarrassed <laughs> um but also i wanted adults to be able to read the same book as their teens um but read an adult story. So it, it is exactly the same story, just with adult naughtiness or without. Um, so when you buy your copy for Mother's Day for your mum in paperback version, it's completely up to you which version you decide to give her. Do you want to keep her up at night, uh, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, what did I just read? Or would you like the safe version? So it's up to you. Um, comment message me let me know what you think of my book um if you send if you when you do buy a copy if you um share with me your receipt or your copy you know just to show proof of purchase um or you send me a picture of your amazon review um message me with it and then i will send you a free iron on logo as my little thank you to you. And I don't know whether you can see, but I'm wearing the t-shirt from my future son-in-law that says future best-selling author. We're gonna get there. Um, so thank you and um, message or comment if you want me to read chapter four. Because I was only planning on doing three chapters. 
So if you want me to do four, message me. But that means you've got to do extra sharing and extra, you know, telling people. Okay, speak to you soon.